What's he talking about? For real estate investing? Post, post-pandemic. What I think about it? Are you, you filming? Don't even stop. I'll do it right now. Here we go. Okay, I guess we're doing an impromptu episode of uh, Confident Real Estate. Again, I'm JC. Welcome back to Confident Real Estate. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're having a nice, relaxing dinner here, cutting it up, talking shop. And uh, apparently, I'm going to be put on the spot to talk about my thoughts on the post pandemic real estate investment opportunities after this whole COVID 19 coronavirus situation, hopefully soon. Uh, dissipates and we can all get back to our normal lives. God willing, there'll be a vaccine for it soon as well, but who knows, we'll see. In the meantime, real estate investment opportunities, my thoughts, sure. Since I'm, I'm being put on the spot, I'm not gonna fold to the pressure, I'll step up. Let's get into it. So we were just talking about this at dinner, uh, you know, thinking outside the box. When you're in real estate and you're watching the markets, and it's a, it's a lifestyle. Most of you watching this video, you know that. If you're in real estate as an investor, as an agent, uh, in any capacity, it becomes a lifestyle. You just naturally, instinctually watch the markets. You see what's happening. So we're talking about post-pandemic, post-COVID, God willing, again, real soon it'll all be over. Uh, I read this article a few weeks ago and it was in New York Post and another one in the Washington Post or the New York Times. And it was talking about all these people who lived in New York City. Now we're in the New York City tri-state area and I, you know all these people who are living in these apartments are densely compacted living together amongst each other. And that obviously is part of the recipe for why we became the epicenter of some of the COVID-19 spread. And unfortunately, it had tragic, tragic consequences for thousands of people in this area. Uh, we've all been quarantined, but the people who had the ability to leave the city did. They went to their summer homes in the Hamptons, Connecticut, Westchester. They rented Airbnb homes through the roof um, just to get out of the city, just to get out of that dense, compacted space. And a lot of them were talking about not coming back, that they realize there's a better quality of life that, because they now really realize they can work remotely. They can detach from being in the office every single day. It's not that bad if you got to commute into the city an hour each way, maybe an hour and a half each way, twice a week instead of five times a week. So what's the point of staying in the city? That was kind of where these articles were going and what they were theorizing. So for me, my mind, my wheels start turning. I, a couple of weeks go by. I actually start calling some of the private schools and Catholic schools that are out in these areas like the Hamptons and uh, other parts of Long Island and you know down by the Jersey Shore. And just seeing like, hey, what's the registration role look like for next year in case I have a kid who's interested in moving, you know, we're moving into the area and we want to register our child for school. And it turns out that there are significant upticks in registrations at a lot of these schools. So if the wealthy and, and um, people who have the means to are going to move to these areas permanently or at least permanently enough that they're going to register their kids in new schools, then the service jobs and the working class are going to have to follow because that's where the jobs are going to be. It's just rational thinking. And for me, I, you know, I'm not someone who does construction investments. I do existing uh, property investments. I, I don't really do ground up construction. So I'm looking at class B, class C properties, working class tenants. Um, those are who I cater to. Those are the people that I love to see So, as my tenants. So we're looking at where those service jobs are going to be. And then you start calling the brokers in the surrounding areas where there's more of a working class community for living. And you say, what's the rental look like? What's the you know uh, housing market look like? And there's a little upticks here and there in certain areas. But for the most part, it's the status quo. Nothing's that devastatingly off from where it was. People aren't jumping in to rent or buy, but they are inquiring. And that's another flag for me to say, hey, there's something to this. So what's next? Next, 
You start becoming familiar with the geographic areas and the layouts. You look at where are the public schools, where's public transportation, how close is it to certain neighborhoods, where are the highways, because people are going to have to get to the jobs in those areas. Um, I also look at crime statistics because if you're not as familiar with an area, uh, you, you want to be real aware of where the crime rates are because you could be, New York City is a perfect example, you could be on Park Avenue and 96th Street in a luxury co-op with doormen and private elevators and five blocks over, uh, the neighborhood changes and it's not as good. And the, obviously you're not going to get the return on your investment there, but you also want to be aware of what the crime rates are because your future tenants are probably going to be more familiar with the area and also aware of the crime rates. Um, so there's a site called neighborhoodscout.com. I've used them before. They did not pay for promotion in this video. Just putting that out there. But I do think Neighborhood Scout gives you at least an overview. Um, and from there, I've been able to, you know, get some, some sense of where the crime areas are in a particular geographic town, uh, location, township that I'm looking in. So I have an idea of what's the better spots, what's not. And sometimes the crime ridden area is near the public transportation, which is not ideal, but it gives you an idea of where you really need to look. You keep an eye on the market, you get familiar with the market right now, and you continue to watch it because the opportunities are going to come once we get past this lockdown and everybody gets a real sense of where they are, whether or not they're gonna be able to get back to a job quickly, and what's gonna happen when that $600 a week boost in unemployment suddenly disappears. Like I was just saying, I like uh, Class B, Class C properties in secondary markets, Class B areas, working class tenants, are the people I cater to that I like. Uh, I just find that it's more recession proof, quite honestly. When class A becomes too expensive, people who maybe stretch their budget a little bit to live in that nicer, beautiful apartment, um, you know, when there's a downturn in the economy or downturn in their personal situation, they're gonna go to class B. Class B people, they stay or they go to class C. But there's always gonna be a market in that B, C area um, I like the Class B properties. It's not super fancy, but it's in decent locations next to public transportation or highways, uh, traffic oriented, transit oriented rather, transit oriented development uh, is what they call it. And you can find all this stuff and get familiar with these geographic layouts. And like I said before about the crime statistics on neighborhoodscout.com, uh, it's all free. Uh, it's all free information, just like hitting the like button right now on this video. Because if you like this content, you're gonna like everything else that we put on and are going to put on. And I have to say we're a brand new channel and thank you to everybody who's already messaged us and who's watched the videos uh, and those who've already subscribed. So please hit like right now. And it's also free to hit subscribe right now so you don't miss our future content because we have a lot more upcoming. Some videos we've already shot that are gonna be released. This just happens to be an impromptu video, but it's a relevant topic, so why not? You'll benefit from it all, and when you, li when you like the video and you subscribe to this video and the content we produce, it's the YouTube algorithm is gonna send you like similar content from other channels, from our channel. You will benefit from it, I promise. So, like us, subscribe, and check out the geographic areas where you think there's investment because all of that research, it's just time. And we're all pretty much locked down for the most part. We're not going out like we used to. So while you have some extra time, go on Trulia, go on Redfin, go on Zillow, go on Neighborhood Scout, start taking drives through certain areas if they're close enough to you to get familiar with certain neighborhoods where there might be some investment opportunities. It's all going to be about the amount of time you're willing to put in and it is going to take some time and effort, but you will reap the rewards if you put in the time and you prepare yourself. Because at the end of the day, preparation gives you confidence and confidence helps you push yourself to that next level and build your portfolio, right? As I said before, I think you're gonna see a situation where as the unemployment benefits start to wear off, as we start to return to some level of normalcy, 
You're going to see people trying to figure out where they are in their own financial situation. And the domino effect of that is going to be opportunity to those of us who did the, the legwork and are prepared to jump on opportunity and are already focused looking for the opportunities that might be out there. Um, I think the service jobs are going to begin to reappear. And obviously, there are a lot of applicants who are out there. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people who've been unemployed for months now, tens of millions of Americans. And you're going to find out who are the people who are able to get back to their pre-pandemic income levels before their savings start to evaporate. And unfortunately, something like 65% of Americans, I may be off, I don't have the information in front of me, but something like 65% of Americans are two paychecks away from being totally bankrupt. And a lot of people have been on unemployment benefits with the $600 boost, and those are going to run out, and then they're going to need to get jobs again, and they have to get those jobs before their savings evaporates. And that will lead to the domino effect of possible foreclosures uh, and pre-foreclosure lease pendants filings and defaults on rent, and a lot of landlords will be able to stomach it. Uh, but depending whether they have a mortgage loan, their debt service coverage ratio requirements, um, by the way, all things we cover here on this channel, Confident Real Estate, but uh, some landlords, the mom and pops, unfortunately, and some of the landlords who may be a little too over leveraged uh, or people who weren't fully leased up to begin with or they're you know, in an area where a lot of their tenants are working class service people, if they're just the luck of it, they might be in a tight situation. So there will be deals available. You just have to prepare yourself to be at the front of the line looking for those opportunities now because they are coming. That will absolutely be the case. So essentially the point is start getting yourself prepared. Like I said, become familiar with the areas where you might want to invest, where you think there's going to be opportunity. Um, see how much you have saved. Uh, talk to investors like yourself, other friends, maybe do a joint venture. If you guys can scrape up the cash to pool together into some kind of joint venture LLC, that is a video we are going to do in the future. It's on the list. We haven't gotten there, but we are going to discuss how to structure joint ventures and tenancy in common partnerships so that you can pool cash to go in on deals with friends and like-minded investors and things you need to consider. It's coming, I promise. We just didn't get there yet. Um, but that's an option. Start looking at what you have, what your friends have, who else is like-minded that you know that might be willing to invest. Uh, put your cash together. Start talking to some of the investors out there, or sorry, the lenders out there who specialize in investment properties. Uh, there's forums, bigger pockets, obviously, everybody knows about. If you don't, Check it out. It's somewhat useful. Uh, there's pros and cons to every forum. I'm not going to bash bigger pockets because for the most part, their content and information is great. Maybe sometimes a community, not everybody's on the same page. But there are a lenders out there that you can meet on forums like that um, that will understand that you're in the investment game and they're not going to be looking at you like an institutional lender and have the same boxes to check. You might have a higher interest rate, but they're available. So start talking to those people now. Start figuring out how much cash you're going to have to come out of pocket with and get yourself pre-qualified. Um, you know, so that when you're ready to pull the trigger, you can pull the trigger and you're not standing around in a line trying to figure out how you're going to get a loan and somebody comes in and swoops that property out from under you. That would really suck. Lastly, just remember that uh, unfortunately, distressed markets and recessionary markets are not great for the economy at large, but they happen. They're cyclical like everything else. And Distressed opportunities, quite frankly, are the best opportunities for you to go out there and get exponential growth to your own portfolio. Um, it is a wonderful time if you're prepared, if you've done the legwork and you're prepared and you're educated on what the opportunities you're looking for are going to look like and you're prepared to think outside the box you will have the confidence to go and get those deals and find them and see the opportunities when they present themselves. 
Just be prepared, start focusing now. Opportunities are coming. So again, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of it. Sorry for the not so great video quality. Again, this was an impromptu video uh, on the thoughts and opinions of myself after talking out with these guys at dinner and them pure pressuring me into doing a quick video, but I hope you got something out of it. And again, please hit the like button down below. Please hit subscribe down below. The YouTube algorithm will make sure you continue to get content like this and other content related to investing and real estate, etc. whether it's from our channel, which has great content and much more great content to come, or from another channel. We're all trying to get out a positive message and I hope you get something out of it. And again, be safe, take care, and get yourself prepared. Till next time, I'm JC, and this is Confident Real Estate.